What is up, everybody? Welcome in. It is Saturday, September 10th. We are on the eve of Browns football being back. I'm your host, Jacob at Rochism13, joined by the very handsome and intoxicating site expert at Dog Pound Daily, Mr. Randy Gersey. How are you doing, Randy? I'm good, Jacob. How are you doing? I, I think that's probably the first time I've been called intoxicating, but handsome gets thrown around a lot. <laughs> I got I got my guest the last couple of days a little bit. Um, he trolled me a little bit. He put Baker Bro in his name on on the screen with it, and I thought it was pretty funny because I had made a Baker Bro joke on his Panthers podcast Tuesday night. So it was it was pretty funny. He got me pretty good. All right, man. I'm I'm glad you joined me tonight. Uh, I thought of no one better to join me and do the first weeks of picks than you. Um, we're gonna do these Saturday. Uh, episodes in the morning. Obviously, we're recording this on Friday night. I'm going to go head-to-head um, with a guest picker. If the picker out picks me, I will donate $20 uh, to their cha- the charity of their choice. And Randy, of course, generously offered to do the same if I beat him this week. So I'm pretty excited about that. So we're going to go top to bottom with the schedule. We're going to give you your picks. We'll save the Browns for the end. I got a couple prop bets that if it was January 1, 2023, I would bet in Ohio, but it's not. And I'm too lazy to drive to a different state. And that's also illegal. So don't do that. But anyway, I'm not going to do any of that stuff. So Randy, let's start at the top, man. I'm going to go in order of what it's got. I brought up this on Google. So if this is not the order that's in yours, I apologize, but here we go. All right. So we got Eagles Lions. Um, man, I would love the Lions to be good, but I just, I think they'll be okay. I think the Lions will be okay, uh, but I think the Eagles are really good. <laughs> yeah, I think that the, the, the Eagles are the better team. Um, I'm one, I'm one of the, I feel like I'm one of the few people that doesn't believe in Dan Campbell. I feel like a lot of people really like him, but it, it, to me, he's just this big cliche that talks about you know, punching people in the mouth and biting things. And it's, uh, it's everything that you heard about nineties football. So he's yeah. got all that bravado and everything, but um, I just, I, they don't have a great team. They don't have a quarterback. Uh, and yeah, Aiden Hutchinson will be good, but he's not going to be able to carry them. So yeah, I, I pick the Eagles as well. I, I really like, um, I like him on Ross St. Brown a lot, but I don't like Jared Goff at all. So <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, Jameson Williams, I don't think he's – I don't know that he's ready yet, but uh, even when he's out there, I, I, it's just – Goff's going to hold all of them back. Yeah, yeah, that's, I, I think that's it. That's all we got to say about that one. All right, 49ers-Bears, uh, I think that's another one, man. I think there's actually quite a few games here as I'm looking at it now that I don't know will be all that uber competitive. Yeah. Um, I think the Bears, like, I love Justin Fields. I wish he had an offensive line. I wish he had weapons because I look at that team. And, yeah, the offensive line I thought was a little bit better uh, against the Browns backups in that preseason game. I thought it was better than I expected it to be. And I saw Justin Fields flash so many times where I thought I was back in Ohio State, and I was so happy. But he – Nick Bosa is going to tear that line up. I got to take the Niners. Even the Niners, I know they believe in Trey Lance, but me, even even the Jets, I mean, if, if I'm taking those picks, Justin Fields to me was the better player. He couldn't have landed in a worse situation. You know, Darnell Mooney's his number one receiver. Uh, like you said, Bosa, Nick Bosa is just going to completely destroy that line. I hate it. Love Justin Fields. I just wish he was on almost any other team. So, yeah, I, I got to pick the Niners as well. There was this really weird rumor, and I don't know if you saw it because I saw it briefly and it got shut down really quickly, where they were talking like they were considering trading him, like that Fields might have been available prior to the draft. This was before Deshaun Watson was was traded to Cleveland, and I was like, okay, if he's available. (laughs) It's funny because it seems like so many people love Justin. Like I love Justin Fields. You said you love him. There's tons of people that love him. The only people that seem like they absolutely hate him are the Bears. They do nothing to help him. And so, yeah, the the one thing they could have done good for him would have been trading him. It would, have been, it would have been good for him. Yeah. All right. Steelers Bengals. Uh, this is really interesting. It's a, a a topic of debate debate around here because I don't know if you know this, but only Cleveland is getting this game, like in Ohio, in terms of <laughs> nice. like the broadcast. Well, I will be in, in case anybody's curious. We'll be up at uh, having a, a pregame uh, live show and then watch party at Platform Brewery. We'll be watching the game, so I will be in Cleveland so that I can actually see it. But if I was to stay home, I wouldn't be able to see it because they're playing the Steelers Bengals, which is just not 
how I like it around here because I usually get the Browns, so I'm pretty upset about that. Randy, I think this is the year, man. I think the Steelers are awful. I, I'm i not even going to – I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I think – I do not think they are good. I think this game will start out close in the first half because I still don't think Burrow's line – it's better. I don't think it's good. I don't like Ted Karras at all, just for what anybody is curious about that. I'll still take the Bengals by a couple of scores, but the Steelers will probably hang around because of that defensive line for a while. I think that the the, the Steelers, uh, yeah, I think they're going to take a step back um, from what we're used to seeing. But Mike Tomlin's been in the league for 15 years. He hasn't had a losing record yet. It seems like every time someone wants to count him out, he's able to you know, figure something out. I think they'll do better than a lot of people are giving him credit for. Um, but I, I don't think they're a playoff team. Um, you, I really you know, don't believe in Mitch Trubisky. I think if I'm in their shoes, I'd, I'm going to start Kenny Pickett right away and get him going because he's got a better – you know, he's got a higher ceiling than what Mitch Trubisky yeah. has. You know, go get him out on the field, get him his reps. But, uh, yeah, I, I think this game's going to be at least a two-touchdown win for the Bengals. It, it, it just like – I will, though, give you – agree with you to an extent about the uh, until I see it, I guess I can't really fully say it's going to happen because I keep saying it and it just doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. We, we, it's like you, you've fallen victim to it before. So now I'm like, you know what, whatever. I'll We're not it's it's going gonna, gonna to happen maybe one day, but <laughs> like, no, <laughs> until then I'm going to stop. It. I'm going to stop predicting it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'm not high on the Patriots. So Pat's dolphins. I just don't get it. Like I understand what happened last year and all that, you know, uh, with Mac Jones, I still don't think he's all that good. I think I think Mac Jones is going to have a similar Baker Mayfield sophomore season. Not as bad because he doesn't have nearly as bad of a coach as what Baker had in his yeah. second year. But I just think Mac Jones is figured out. I think the league is going to handle him. Um, I don't think the Patriots are a playoff team. I do think the Dolphins are if two is okay. If two it can be, you know okay even he didn't even have to be that great and i think he'll be good uh come week one so I'll, i'm gonna take the dolphins yeah i'm gonna go uh, miami as well i don't believe in tua i don't think that he's i think i think he's the the, the problem that's going to be the thing that holds them back i think you, you we've probably all seen the meme where you got the, the you know the the sports car sitting in the carport at, at the mobile home park you know that that's tua with those with those weapons he has i just I don't think he, you know, his wind up takes forever. You know, his passes just seem to sail. I think that Tyreek Hill is going to be limited there, but I agree with you. I think that first week, you know, it's all new. It's all fresh. Uh, Mike McDaniel, I really liked him as a hire. So I think he'll have that running game going the Patriots. Yeah. I think last year was a little more fluke than anything. I still don't have any receivers. Um, uh, Hunter Henry, probably their best receiving weapon really. And yeah, I, I think they're going to be middle of the pack this year too. It, it gives me hope for revenge from last year's ass whooping. That's the only thing that I'm. Right. I just I want him to beat the Patriots so bad. I want the Browns yeah. to win so bad later in the year. But you're also right. I don't think I don't think he'll have as terrible of a season as Baker did in 2019 because uh, Belichick would stop throwing the ball if he's making interceptions. <laughs> whereas Freddie Kitchen was just like, let's just try it again. Four verts, let's go. Yeah, and it was <laughs> it never worked. Well, God, we'll call a draw play on fourth and nine. <laughs> um, God, that didn't work. What the fuck? All right, Texans, Colts. Um, I I don't know, man. I'm not buying the Texans. Uh, I think Davis Mills is fine. I like Brandon Cooks a lot. I was really hoping that we could get him in that package deal for Watson when it came through. I was like, well, if we're going to get saddled down with Watson, at least get us Brandon Cooks maybe. But, you know, obviously that didn't happen. I think the Texans will be fine, but I, I don't know, man. Like, phew. Jonathan Taylor, I just think he can beat half the league by himself. Like, and they're just gonna. I like Matty Ice better, and I like Carson Wentz. It's just, it's a no brainer for me. So I'll take Indy. I gotta go Indy too. Um, I, I'm still. I'm also having a hard time with Matt Ryan. He, he, Matt Ryan. Um, he's one of those guys that just. You know, I used to cover the Falcons for a little over a year, and that their fan base, man, he could sit there and he could throw, throw the ball ten yards, like under under throw it by ten yards. And people would blame the receiver for going too far. Like, I don't know what it was about Matt Ryan, but he, no matter what he did, he would never get called out for a mistake. So over the last couple of years, everyone's like, like the, the only problem with the Falcons has been everybody around him. He's he's been on the decline too. So you know, um, 
I actually even heard somebody say, oh, now he's playing in Indianapolis in a dome. Like, dude, they played in a dome. In <laughs> in dome in like, and then, you know, he'd go to, you know, the games that he played outside of the dome a lot of times were like Carolina and uh, yeah. New, uh, New Orleans is dome, dome. And then you go to Tampa Bay. Like, he wasn't playing in these cold weather games or anything. So I, I think by the end of the season, he'll really tail off. But yeah, the Texans, I think, have a better shot of getting the number one pick. So I think that's where they're headed. I, that's the only hope that that gives me in the potential like Watson comes back for a playoff run is that his first game, so to speak, is against the Texans, and I don't think they're yeah. as good as people think. Now, here's one that was hard for me, Saints and Falcons. This one is a little bit hard for me because I picked Jameis Winston to lead the league in passing this year because I think the motherfucker is just going to be slinging it. I think he'll throw like 26 interceptions, but like he's just going to be slinging it all over. I like Atlanta a little bit more than other people because I like Arthur or Smith. Uh, I, I kind of was okay uh, with taking Mariota in Cleveland when we thought Watson wasn't coming after the like, oh, he's not coming, you know, stuff like that. I was like, oh, give me Mariota. Like, I'll go with that. I'm, but I'm not that crazy. So I'll take the Saints for now. Hey, we're getting all the same picks because I got New Orleans as well. Um, I, I, my, my worry with New Orleans is a lot of people are saying, well, you know, they, they kept Dennis Island, they got the same coaching staff. Like, yeah, they did in 2012 also when Sean Payton was suspended and they went from, you know, it was a two or three, you know, double digit winning seasons in a row to winning like seven games. Yeah. And then they went right back to double digits when Payton came back. So I think you can't uh, underestimate what a good coach does. So uh, again, I, I don't know what to expect from them from the season, but I think they'll have the advantage over Atlanta. I think, uh, did you hear, like James? Did you hear him the other day talking about uh, the, the wrists and the elbow, or the wrists and the or, and the ankles and how they're the same and elbows? What are the elbows? Or just the knees? I mean, he's so goofy. But you're right; he's just going to sling it and uh, he's gonna throw tons of touchdowns, tons of picks. But they'll probably still win some games. He's Jameis. Like he will always unapologetically be Jameis, and I love it. I, I yeah, and he's it. got. I hope when he retires, he makes like workout videos. They would be oh. fantastic. Like he, he, right he, he could make he could become a billionaire doing that. First, yeah, hundred uh, percent. Ravens, Jets, the return of Joe Flacco. Well, I guess it's not the return because they're in New York. Uh, I just, I think we're going to get here. There's some games coming up. I think we're going to differ on. So I know we're getting there. So apologies to everybody for that. But I got to take the Ravens. I, there's just no shot. I, the, the Jets don't have any shot, do they? No, they don't. Um, I, I like Robert Salah. I think he's a good coach. There's just – he inherited such a bad team. And then Joe Flacco, I mean, it was a couple years ago when he was in Denver and John Elway said that he was just entering his prime, which is one of the funniest damn things I ever heard. Um, so I'm like, he's literally – like it, it, his career ended three years before he went to Denver. So it's it's crazy that he's still playing. And, yeah, Baltimore's probably pretty excited to see him again. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited to see him week two. I'll be at that game. So yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. excited for him to come to Cleveland uh, next week. All right, this is where we're going to get different, I think, potentially. We got the Jags. We got the Commanders. I'm going to take Jacksonville here, and it's because I really hate Carson Wentz. I don't think people understand how stupid it was. So you you watched, you watched Howie Roseman fleece the Colts, and you still Perfect. gave it. Yeah, and then you gave up two threes for him after that. Yeah, and one of my favorite things about Carson Wentz is how Frank Reich went to ownership and was, you know, pounding the table for him and vouched for him. And then afterwards he went to them and said, yeah, I apologize. I was wrong about that. <laughs> uh, so I've said the same thing. I, I, I've gone back and forth on this one. I, I, I want to pick the Jags. I feel like they could win. But with Washington being at home – Wentz is usually okay at the beginning of the season. I think he'll fall apart later, but I, th I think they'll win this one. I, it's it's like a blind leap of faith. I I also really like uh, Doug Peterson. I really do. I, I, I yeah, think I, I think he's a I, I think he's a good coach too. Um, no, that's why I said I I went back and forth on this one a lot. So <laughs> I, I wouldn't be shocked to be wrong, but I, I think I just got to go with Washington. Uh, you're probably right. I just like to be different sometimes. Let's get, <laughs> let's get into the four o'clock games, Packers, Vikings. I do enjoy a good, like the Steelers have this situation too. I do enjoy a good uh, uh, division rivalry week one. It's still the Packers Lee division to me. So I, I got to take the Packers. I, I, 
for any other reason than I just like Aaron Rodgers more than I like Kirk. That's all. Yeah. See, and I went the opposite. I'm going Minnesota in this one. I think new head coach at home. Um, I feel like this is going to be not that they'll overtake the Packers, but I think this could be a big game for them to to make a little mini statement and say, hey, you know, we're, we're going to contend with them a bit this year. Um, I don't think they will in the long run, but I, I could see a week one win. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm going to get weird, man. We got Giants, Titans, and I'm going to take the Giants. And I know, I know, I know all of it. I just don't know about Tannehill anymore. Like, I'm trying to think about Tannehill coming back from that playoff. That was on him, man. Like, to, in my mind, that that playoff loss, that that interception, they should have beat the Bengals like three times. And, yeah. and Tannehill was just – I just – I don't know. And then you're like, hey, you know what? Like, we'll, we'll get Traylon Burks. Uh, you can have A.J. Brown. We'll get Traylon Burks. And now all of a sudden he went from dude that showed up out of weight to, oh, he's going to be rookie of the year because apparently – towards the end of the preseason he had some good games there. I don't I don't know what's going on down there. I don't want any part of it. I like the I like, you know, I really like Dable. I'm going to take the guy that I, you know, it's unpredictable. My buddy's a Giants fan, he'd probably even tell me not to pick the Giants this week. Uh but I just I it's more about I don't like the Titans than I like the Giants and and for that reason I'll take I'll take the G-men. I I don't like the Titans either. Um I don't like what they did this off season. I already wasn't a huge fan of the roster. I was surprised they somehow got the number one seed last year. That was insane. Um, mm. But I just, I feel like this game, if, if, if Dable had anybody other than Daniel Jones, mm. you know, I'd, I'd feel a little more confident going with the giants. Um, I, I don't think that the Titans are going to win their division. I think, you know, I can see Jacksonville coming around and surprising everybody and stealing it. You know, if, if they were able to get hot, uh, not that any of them will really be that great. You know, maybe nine wins will do it. But uh, I'd like to see Malik Willis eventually take over for Tannehill because he's just—I I don't think he's the guy. But yeah, I think they'll win in Week One. I just—I don't see it with the Giants yet. Yeah, I wish there was a better quarterback situation. Uh, yeah, I'll go. I'll go into the Raiders and the Chargers and. In a game like this, I will take the better head coach, the better in the better quarterback. I like Herbert more than Carr. I do not think Josh McDaniels is a good coach. Uh, I wrote a article for Fansided that was about like three bowl, three playoff contenders that will miss, and this was my number one. And I just go look at uh, Josh McDaniels' offensive rankings without Tom Brady. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's good. I don't think he's good. So I'll take the Chargers. No. Yeah, he's he he's stunk in, in Denver. He's stunk in St. Louis. Um and now he's gonna come and play in the AFC West where it's absolutely stacked. Um yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of McDaniels. He's one of those guys that, you know, I I know some people like Bill O'Brien. I never liked Bill O'Brien. I felt like he and McDaniels both got famous because they got into arguments with Brady and people thought, Oh, he stood up to Brady. He's amazing. And it's like, well, no, he's not amazing. He just, that's what happens on NFL sidelines. Uh, so yeah, I don't believe in Josh McDaniels. I was really happy Cleveland didn't hire him. Um, so yeah, good luck Raiders. Uh, you were, you were better with the, with the, with the Bichotta, however you say his name, uh, the interim right. last year that the, the team actually liked. So McDaniels has left just, you know, destruction everywhere he goes. So I, I don't think it'll be good for them. And I think the chargers win this one. I, I can ne I'll never get over what he did to the Colts either. Like it's no. just, it, it, you know, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's hard. You know, and in the NFL is funny because you got to think the coaches are supposed to be in charge, but some of the players are making triple what the coach makes. So you you got to earn the respect. You got to get the players to believe in you and fight for you. You know, and 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 trust you. And when you are bailing, you know, thirty minutes before a press conference, basically. It, Teams know who you are. They know you're, you, you know, they know what you're made of. So yeah, I, I think he's gonna have a hard time even winning the team over. I was gonna say if he starts to struggle, I think it'll fall apart real quick. Yeah, I mean, you saw how quickly it went south in Denver. Yeah, like, yeah. It, yeah. After they, a playoff, things were great when they started out winning, and then it was like six losses in a row, and everybody hated him. It's like, oh, you suck. My bad. Uh, <laughs> oh, he is a jerk, isn't he? Oh my goodness, everybody was right. All right, <laughs> Chiefs, Cardinals. I don't like Kyler Murray one bit. I I I keep getting fooled. 
I'll start at the beginning of the year and I'll say, you know what? Kyler Murray's not any good. Then he'll start out on a tear and I'll be like, oh my God, I was stupid. Kyler Murray's great. And then he falls apart as soon as they figure out him and Cliff Kingsbury and Clint Kingsbury can not make adjustments. And then I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. I was fooled about being fooled. So it's not going to happen this year. It's not going to happen. I'll take the Chiefs by two scores. I'm going to take the Chiefs too. Uh, the funniest thing to me with Kyler Murray is the fact that they put that homework clause in his contract and then they apologize for it afterwards. I'm like, they're putting that in there because they know. Yeah, they're, and they're putting it in there because they know he's not studying. They're no, you know, he's pulling a Jamarcus Russell, and you can't believe in a quarterback that's not going to put the work in. And if you're telling them, hey, we need you to work on it, that you already have your answer. So I, I'm surprised they paid him. I mean, he's great in Madden, but you know. <laughs> he is great in Madden. I do love. But playing yeah, him. it's you know until he dedicates himself and you know truly studies like you know the great quarterbacks. Yeah, he's not going to be able to hang with teams like the Chiefs. So a rematch of last year's season opener on Sunday Night Football, Bucks Cowboys. I think that whatever is going on, and now the rumor is now that there is a rough spot in the goat's household in his marriage. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that just recently. I saw it like twenty minutes ago. Actually, I almost forgot that I saw it. Um, She's not going to come to Tampa. <laughs> yeah, I, like who cares? She'll be there when you get home, Tom. It's fine. Yeah, but. I worry about the beginning of the year. Like when you're still trying to get full bore football mode, he was away from it. I still think he was on the mass singer. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. I don't even watch I mean, it. What's he going to say? If he tells him he's on it, then, then people are going to know who to guess. He's got to say. Was he like, um, what was that first season? Um, I can't think of what her name, her name is, but she, her brother was on it. And like three weeks before he got unmasked, she like revealed it in an interview. She's like, Oh yeah, he's been on the mass singer. <laughs> and I was like, what the, and I was actually watching it. At the time. <laughs> this is bullshit. But I think maybe there's some distractions in there. And though I'm not a big, I tr I have a tendency to trigger Cowboys fans on the internet, uh, but I will pick the Cowboys. Uh, week one. I know this is another one I go back and forth on. I, I don't like what Dallas did this off season. I think one of the things that they did, I think, you know, they, 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 they screwed up, but actually did the right thing and not paying Randy Gregory. I don't think he was worth the money Denver gave him just to get, I mean, his most sacks he's ever had in a season is six. I get it. He's good, but he's also, you know, disappear. He gets three or four uh, penalties a game. It seems like constantly going off sides. Um, and then he's constantly hurt. So I, I think they actually dodged a bullet by not getting him. I think they'll do better with, you know, Dorrance Armstrong, Dante Fowler and Sam Williams kind of playing in a rotation there. Uh, but I really, really hate what they did with trading Amari Cooper. Uh, you draft a left tackle to basically replace Tyron Smith one day, but then you move him to guard and you're moving him as a, they're talking about having him as a backup guard. So I'm like, why are you even training this guy to be a backup guard? You, you have him in a position that's not import, as important. He should have been playing for the guy who has not played an entire season since 2015. So I hate everything that they did this off season. Um, but I feel like you, I feel like they're going to win too. I feel like I don't know why, but I just feel like they're going to they're going to pull off every now and then. They pull off this just stupid win that came out of nowhere, and then they disappoint. So I think this will be their their win, and then they'll do something <laughs> stupid later, and the Eagles will win the division. The one that sets you up for the disappointment. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be one where they like, oh, we finally beat Tom Brady. This is our year. It's not going to be their year as long as Jerry Jones is still there. It's not going to be their year. It's yeah, yeah. That's I'm I'm with it. I'm with you 100. All right. Broncos, Seahawks, Russell Wilson, he's going to ride. He's just going to – he's going to – Let's ride. He's going to school them, man. <laughs> he is going to drop like a 30-burger on their heads. It's not It's not going to be a game. I'm going to take the Broncos. I saw somebody posted something. I don't know if it was a, the Seahawks website or something like that posted. You know, it's time for Geno. And I was like, God, can you imagine boasting that? Like, <laughs> you know. I've always been saying like there's a battle for quarterbacks in Seattle where Drew Locke is taking on Geno Smith and the the only loser is Seattle fans. So there's no good option there. They're not going to be good this year. Uh, and, and you're right. I think Russell's just going to carve them apart and it's, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be fun to watch, but it's going to be ugly for Seattle. Oh, I will enjoy every damn second of it. Yeah. Because you know he's going to have so much fun. Because there's that tension. Like, they tried to trade him for the number one pick in 2018 to the Browns. Like, I mean, yeah, it's not, it's no secret that that, that divorce has been like four years in the running. So, it, yeah, it just finally actually happened. All right. 
Browns Panthers, let's wrap this thing up. Let's talk about the game that most people that are watching this, if they're still watching this, they're probably not. But if they are, <laughs> this is the game that they're all waiting for. I will let you do the honors and go first because I know you said pregame that uh, you had a lot going back and forth on this. Yeah, I, I really do. Um, yeah, I feel like, you know, there's there, there's a cycle with, with Browns fans sometimes where we, we get into the off season and we start talking about how elite the roster is. And we, you know, you, you look at all the holes on the roster and go, well, that, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. But, you know, cause we've got this, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We can't stop the run. We got good cornerbacks. You know, we, we can stop the pass. It, it doesn't matter that our cornerbacks always hurt. You know, we've got depth. AJ green can go out there and cover whoever he wants to cover. Um, and then, on off of that, it doesn't matter. Our center's bad and our tackles are always hurt. You know, we, we've got Joel Batonio at guard. Come on. Um, you know, doesn't matter. We've got Jacoby Brissett. We have Nick Chubb. We've got Kareem Hunt. And and that's another thing is we, we sit here and talk about how amazing the run game is going to be. And we're going to win because of the run game. But the fact that we can't stop the run doesn't matter. Um, I, I, I can't. I, I just don't understand, like, why we do this. And then every year we set up for disappointment. Um, and now it's turning into the everyone's trash and Baker. Baker's a terrible person. Baker's a terrible quarterback. I don't know. Baker's got DJ Moore. He's got Robbie Anderson. He's got LaVisca Chenault. He's got Terrace Marshall. He's got um, Richard Higgins. He's got a lot of weapons. They've got a, you know, a, a top draft pick at left tackle who I think is really good. Um, and, and their defense is very underrated. You know, they've got a very they got a stout defensive line. Brian Burns can really get after the quarterback. Um, Jeremy Chen can be a monster. Uh, JC Horn is very good at corner. So I, I think it's going to be a lot closer than a lot of Browns fans are thinking. Um, I think I'm going to go Cleveland, though, <laughs> just because I feel like in the end they'll do it. They'll, they'll, they'll get a close win. Uh, Kate York maybe will knock in a game winning field goal. But I think it's going to be a little bit of a, a wake up call for Browns fans that, hey, you know, it's not going to be as smooth sailing of the season as we're thinking. I think it's a dog fight. Um, I've been saying it all week that it's definitely a dog fight. And the weather is potentially going to be bad from everything that I've been told. Um, yeah. And I think that plays into the Browns' hand a little bit because they're kind of this power – because they can be a power run game. I know they use yeah. a lot of the wide zone and in, in, in the zone blocking uh, schemes, but they can run at power if they want to. And I think that they are more built for a nasty game than I think the Panthers are. Uh, I think I've said this all week and a bunch of people have started saying it recently. So it makes me feel like I'm not totally stupid, but I think JOK versus Christian McCaffrey is the biggest matchup this weekend. Can he cover Christian McCaffrey? Can he not just in the run game, but in the pass game, just keeping Christian McCaffrey from busting a big one from taking a dump off 30 yards. Now we do know that Baker doesn't like to check it down a ton, right? But that may be part of the scheme because Christian McCaffrey is the best player they have on the offense. And you got to uh, use him while he's healthy because by week four, he's probably not going to be there. <laughs> I I, auto, I got auto-drafted Christian McCaffrey this year, so I'm going to be optimistic about it because, well, I don't have any damn choice. So, <laughs> and the That's loser is going to have to, like, wear an embarrassing shirt for a podcast. And, like, I mean, I'm wearing a taco shirt, so I don't think anything embarrasses me. But I've got, like, I've got Fortnite, so you can't. Well, it's a, well, this is actually this is actually a Dragon Ball Super shirt. Most people nice. don't get the reference, but it is it's an anime T-shirt. People just don't usually get it because it's a really really obscure reference. Um, <laughs> so I, I so I try to go back and forth. Which head coach do I like better? Well, I like Kevin Stefanski a lot more than I like yeah. Matt Rule. Which quarterback do I like better? Well, I like Baker Mayfield more than I like Jacoby Brissett. Now, I might like Jacoby Brissett in this system more than I like Baker Mayfield in that system, but there's no arguing which quarterback is more talented. Right. And if you are trying to argue that Jacoby is more talented, you're just being a hater. And yeah. I trust me, I like to hate on Baker Mayfield sometimes. It makes me feel better <laughs> about my life. So, like, you know, it, you know, it's just you get it. You know, you understand. So I go top to bottom. I think our corners can neutralize their wide receivers because I think they have good, not great wide receivers. And right. but, okay, but can we? It's I think it comes down to that pass rush, and I just think ours is better. 
And that's why I'll take the Browns. I think, I think there's so many things that cancel each other out across the board. Like, Oh, our, our corners can lock down their wide receivers. Well, I think their corners can lock down our wide receivers. So like, okay, yeah. there's a wash right there. I think David Njoku is your key player on, on offense because they can be, a, you can exploit their linebackers in coverage. Maybe again, it's Jacoby Brissett. Now, Kevin can scheme open wide receivers. If he can just hit the open wide receivers, which an injured Baker struggled to at times, then I think they can be enough. All of that said, Cade York's going to become a hero week one. That's that's where I'm at. I'll take him 20 to 17. Like, that's... I think 20 to 17 is a score that I, that I did in my article. So, so oh, really? I, I believe so. I know it was a three point. I can't remember if I did like 23, 20 or 20, 17, but I had it something like that with a, a field goal at the end. And, you know, and I, I think that the weather, like you said, it's going to play, play a big factor. The, the Panthers do have uh, Deontay Foreman and, mm-hmm. and Cuba Hubbard, who, who, you know, they, they can play a little bit of that power game too. Um, but yeah, I, I think that the, I think that, you know, Hunt and Chubb are obviously better. That's so if it comes down to the run and kind of controlling the clock. Um, I do think Amari Cooper, he's going to get his numbers. Uh, yeah. Like you talked about, Stefanski he can scheme people open, and he's one of those guys that he's one of the most elite route runners in the NFL. He's going to be exactly where he's supposed to be, which I think will help Brissett a lot. Um, but, I mean, I agree with everything else you said. You know, Baker's the better better quarterback, but I, I also agree that I think Jacoby Brissett fits in the Brown system better than Baker did. So He won't um, take those chances. Yeah, exactly. And th- and that's what Stefanski wants. He doesn't want that guy who's airing it down the field and throwing it into double coverage. I mean, a lot of the hot, the plays that Baker made in the preseason, that's what he was doing. He was throwing these risky passes and uh, you know, it's he'll get away with it from time to time and 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 you know, Matt Rule may need that since he's on the hot seat, but uh that's not what they wanted in Cleveland. So, I think it'll be a a you know, ball control game and it'll be close and I think Cleveland will win win a close one. Sounds good, man. Well, I appreciate you joining me. Um, We'll see how this plays out, and we'll talk soon, man. All right. Appreciate you having me. All right, guys. That's it for me today. I will not have a daily on Sunday. We are going up for the live kickoff up at Platform right off right on Lorraine, off of Lorraine Avenue in Ohio City. So I will see you guys up there. If not, I'll see you guys Monday. Go Browns.